I figured we could talk while I'm out. Um, like I said, we've upgraded to a bigger bucket. This is the goat that we're keeping. She's a great milk goat. She's a great goat all around. She has good temperament. She doesn't kick when I'm milking her, like at all. Um, her baby's great, so I'm hoping to keep her baby to keep the genetics. Um, like I said, we're gonna get rid of Luna. Um, a lot's happened in the garden. Um, and then the greenhouse. I'd like to do an update on that for you guys today. Um, Biscuit is still Biscuit. He's being good. He loves living in his new house. He hangs out with the goats all day. Um, but we're looking to rehome Luna and both of her babies if she doesn't have good ge milking genetics. I don't want to risk feeding her baby girl for a whole year in hopes that maybe she has better genetics. Um, if mom doesn't have it, even if dad had it, I'm still nervous, especially with feed prices going up. Um, we were going to keep the boy and band him and keep him as a meat goat, but if I'm getting rid of mom and baby girl, I would like him to go with them. Um, I've had a couple people inquire, mostly as pets, but hopefully we find our new home soon. So we started separating Mary Jane, the one that's on the stand, the one that I'm milking, the one that we're keeping, we started separating her baby girl at three weeks. So every night she gets separated from mama. She's still where mom can see her and hear her and stuff like that, but she's just not able to drink. So we're only milking in the mornings now and every morning we're getting about a half a gallon. Ooh, good boy. He just got done eating his breakfast. There's Presley, there's baby girl. She gets separated at night, but she's still doing good. feed our littles. We've only got two littles. I just cleaned out their water the other day. So we've got a cochin and a barnyard mix. And all the big guys are interested in their food. I am really working on getting a external mic for my iPhone just so you guys can hear me better while I'm recording. and she's a bantam coaching and I got her off Craigslist for free I'm assuming she's old she doesn't lay any eggs but she's cute and we keep her around I had a broody duck who was in this tree she would nest in this tree over by the compost pile and I brought it over here last night thinking that she would move and come brood over here granted none of our duck eggs are fertile but I thought that this way her and her sister could snuggle together but she's not over here Let's go check the duck house. Our compost is on the other side of that fence and that's where the Christmas tree was. So I'll go check over there if they're not in here. Duck ducks. Okay, well we got one egg. I don't know where the ducks are, but we got a fresh egg. Okay, so the Christmas tree was over here and she's not over there. Duck ducks. 
it's not under there. Duck ducks! Hi babies, I was worried about you. Come on. Let's go get some breakfast. So my thought is they heard me when I was over there milking the goats. So they started running down there to see me. <laughs> Come on, babies. Okay, babies, you gotta go home. That would be broody one. <laughs> see how she's all fluffed up and she's keeping her beak open. Hi, mama. Come on, keep going. She's mad that I took the eggs out from under her, but like I said, they weren't fertile. We don't have a drake. These are our only two girls. We are currently looking for white call ducks, just because I want two bantam sized ducks. And I especially want white so that way they contrast with our Cayugas. Back through the fence. Ugh, come on, girls. All my animals are very food driven, <laughs> they get lots of snackies. Someone just laid an egg. Okay, these are my red jungle fowl and I have about 12 of them. These are just the two that flew out this morning. I lied, three that flew out this morning. Um, we actually adopted mom off Craigslist for free and she was broody and she had about 16 eggs under her. Well, I didn't want to take the eggs away from her so I brought her home, eggs and all. She ended up hatching out 12 of them. Later, I found out what breed they were. Mama, her name is Crackhead now her personality fits her name and all of her babies have the same personality i have never seen chickens that are as flighty and as crazy as these they don't make normal chicken sounds if you've ever heard a broody hen they sound like that all the time they kind of scream i want to take you guys out for a garden tour but i started a loaf of sourdough bread and i'm going to finish it up today and your sourdough will be sticky and then I'm just gonna cover it and let it sit for an hour and then after an hour I'm gonna do my first stretch and fold and then I'm gonna do four more every half hour after that okay I just made a coffee I figured now would be a good time for a garden tour but ghosty one of our barn cats is pregnant so she will be getting fixed as soon as she has her babies the fog's cleared so I figured now is a better time to do the tour if you look out front you can see that oh I don't know how to zoom. Oh, there we go. Our irises have all bloomed out front. Okay, back to the tour. So as you can see, we've gotten a bunch of mulch and cardboard down in our pumpkin, squash, and watermelon patch. The last thing we have to do is this corner right here, but we've got a bunch of giant pumpkins that are doing really well. We've got some littler pumpkins that are doing good, some watermelon, things like that. Oh, here's our rosemary. The rosemary looks amazing. And then we've got cilantro right there. And then two different types of basil. One there, one there. Our garlic bed looks really good. Same with our onions. This is one of the newer beds that we just built. I don't know if those tires are going to stay there. I was just playing around with ideas. But as you can see, we're using a lot of filler in this bed. Um, we put down a lot of cardboard just as a weed barrier. And then because we're digging out our duck pond in the backyard, we're adding the clay into the bottom of this bed along with some compost material. So as you can see, there's eggs, banana peels, um, cardboard from things like our pasta, just a bunch of filler. Another new bed. So right along this end is dill, tomatoes, and then peppers. And then in the middle is a mini white pumpkin. And you can see I've added some bachelor button flowers on the sides and some alyssum over by the peppers. I just like to have bees over by my plants. They do so much better. Um, here's our other pepper bed that looks really nice. This is our cut flower bed. Our cut flower bed came from a cut flower mix of seeds that I planted. So a lot of it, I don't know what it is. This right here I know is a marigold because I specifically saved seeds last year to grow marigolds. I think these like stringy type ones are Cosmos. I know that these white ones are Alyssum and these ones next to it are Bachelor Buttons because I grew Bachelor Buttons, but the rest I don't really know. <laughs> We've got another Alyssum, 
more bachelor buttons, a marigold, and a lissom. Like I said, I think these ones are Cosmos. I don't know what the rest of these are though. Um, our next bed is our small tomatoes. So these are cherry tomatoes and Roma tomatoes. These ones are Sweet Million, and then a bunch more small ones. And I've planted a lissom all around, just like I said, to keep the bees around. I also planted thyme over here in this corner where these tomato, these smaller tomatoes are gonna be. This is our white sage in this little terracotta pot at the end of the tomato bed. And our potatoes look amazing. So this is one type of tomato, a potato. This is another variety of potato, another variety of potato. And then this last variety is our purple potatoes. And the only reason I can tell is because if you look at the stalk on the stem right there, it's purple. Our tulips have gone by, but my husband bought bulbs that are growing up that look like our irises, but I know they're not. And they seem to be doing really well. I am hoping to take these tulips out of here and separate the bulbs so we have more tulips for next year. And I also wanna get rid of this pallet bed. Now that we have a bunch of extra repurposed wood. I'd like to build a decent flower bed for my bulbs. Okay, back over here. So we put up a cattle panel trellis here. We're going to put another one on the back side of that bed, but because these are 10 feet and the trellises are the cattle panels are only four feet wide, we need two of them. This right here is lemon balm. One of my best advices that I can give about gardening is don't plant things like lemon balm or mint in your garden beds because they will take over. They will suffocate all your other plants. Okay, this bed, squash. These are butternut and acorn here. Another alyssum. The, we put the cattle panel trellis here instead of over there just because these ones are much more mature than these cucumbers that I direct sowed. Here's my lemon tree that I thought I killed and she's a real rock star. This other bed is cucumbers that were transplanted. And the reason I transplant cucumbers and direct sow cucumbers is because these will be our early harvest. Those will be our late harvest. More alyssum. There's a pumpkin I just added in that we didn't have space for in the pumpkin patch that'll grow up the trellis. Another pumpkin, like I said, these are all cucumbers. And I think I might have one or two zucchini over here. But I've also got a morning glory, a black eyed Susan vine, and another black eyed Susan vine. This end of the bed has our goji berry bush. And then our big tomatoes, these are not cherry tomatoes. The other bed is mostly cherry tomatoes and Roma tomatoes. These are gonna be big, like beefsteak and stuff. At the end of this bed, we have our lavender. I planted three six packs of lavender and out of those three six packs, these are the only ones that I had grow. But as you can see, there's just a lissom hidden all up in. Everything looks so good. Another alyssum right there, and another one there, and another one at the end. I made this the other day. This is a six pack of morning glories that I grew. It's crazy growing things from seed because when they bloom, it's just so satisfying. Like I have a morning glory over here. Look how pretty that is. And it just fills my heart to know that I grew this from seed. Um, this is our pea and carrot bed. So you can see these are carrots. They're doing pretty good. Any place where the chickens didn't scratch up, they scratched up all right there. But you can see the carrots over there are doing good. The peas are all starting to climb up their fence. My husband bought another fig tree. <laughs> Here's our fig tree that we bought last year. But everything looks really healthy and is growing well. Over here's our cabbages. The onions on the sides and on the back are doing good. Um, we haven't taken the netting off the cabbages and I probably won't until they get too big for the netting because the netting has really helped. Our blackberries are starting to bloom. That's 
a bachelor button that I put there. And then we have a ton of strawberries coming in. So we're gonna have lots and lots of strawberries. And then our other blackberry bush looks very good. These are some flowers I just couldn't find a spot for. And then we have a bunch of stuff still in the greenhouse, but we've cleaned out quite a bit, hoping to start more corn. So this new bed that I showed you guys, the whole back side is going to be our rows of corn and our sunflowers. And then the front here is where we're going to plant more of our leftover stuff that's still in the greenhouse that we didn't have room in the pumpkin squash watermelon patch. So you can see everything over here is doing really good. That watermelon, that watermelon, these pumpkins. This is one of our giant pumpkins that's doing amazing. These are our mini and jack-o'-lantern pumpkins. We got another one over there doing really good. So I'm headed to clean and refill the goat's water, but I wanted to show you guys the irises up close and personal. They're so beautiful. My husband wanted me to plant papayas. Little did I know it grows as like a literal tree. So I don't know what I'm gonna do with those. And these are my cream of the crop acorn squash. These will probably be the ones that we put in the tires. Underneath our hydro table is our corn. And like I said, that new U-shaped bed that we built is the one that we're gonna use for our corn and our sunflowers. Okay, so everyone inside should be waking up now. I've done a garden greenhouse tour. I've started sourdough. I've milked the goats. I fed everyone. 